the Alp Lorgi restoration project has uh, allowed the Lorgi burn to restore its natural course from where it was uh, diverted for agriculture. The Cairngorms National Park Authority were supportive of this project right from its inception and in 2012 we helped fund a feasibility study to look at the putting in woody debris and removing some of the bank material from this river. The river itself was underperforming as a fishery, uh, the habitat was really really poor in it so we engaged consultant Seebeck to have a look at it. We were the principal designer on this, we're a predominantly geomorphology company and we were employed to do the geomorphic design for the site um, in eight, about eight years ago now so I think one of the first assisted recovery or stage zero projects done in the UK. The site was you know, really heavily overgrazed with livestock and deer, uh, you could see a mouse run across it. Uh, we took a, a sort of process-based approach following an assisted recovery philosophy for this where we try and remove the constraints to natural river process. We removed embankments, um, we removed some uh, rock hard bank protection, we replaced the large rock bank protection with large wood and put large wood structures in other locations to really kickstart a geomorphic process. The sediment that we removed from the embankments it had previously been dredged from the river. We used that as a supply to uh, kickstart sediment transfer process. So there's two locations on the site where we reintroduced gravel material to be worked back through the site uh, by natural process. First of its kind in uh, Britain at that time, it's caused a lot of interest in how we've done it. We were very lucky working with Seafield Estate that they gave us a blank a blank canvas so we could pretty much do what we wanted. The, the river itself, we did baseline monitoring on it, so we knew how little fish was in it. It's just increased throughout the years, it got better and better. And you look at it now, eight years on, it's, it's really taken off. I mean, the tree growth benefits the river, everything, the whole ecology. We've even got Capper Cayley visiting the site now. We do have Capper on the site here. There's been uh, cocks and hens seen within the restoration project, which is great news. Um, the woodlands in this area support Capper Cayley and it's exciting to see them use this new habitat. What's great about this type of project is you're getting direct benefits where the work's been happening. So, you know, you were seeing the river meandering, you're seeing this fantastic habitat developing. But really what's key to this is the benefits downstream. So it's role in natural flood management, reducing flood risk further downstream, the benefit to communities, the engagement which has already happened with volunteers and schools, showing people these types of projects that are in that are close to where they live, um, explaining the benefits, explaining the multiple benefits. Well, we've had um, scout troops volunteering in here with us. We've had local volunteers. We also involved a lot of the local school kids. So we ran a project with the school. We had the school kids up here monitoring the fish with us, with kids planting trees with the then Environment Minister Paul Wheelhouse. And you'll try to get them to buy into what's actually happening here. We didn't really know how important this type of project was going to be and this specific project. It's, it's turned into a really good case study for how restoration should perhaps be done in these types of environment. From the state's point of view, it seems win-win for us. Um, habitat's restoring. Um, it's Lots of volunteers, community effort. It's, it's been a great project for the state to be involved in, very positive. We definitely would like to see more of these types of projects happening. You know, having, having 100 of these projects and then we'll really see a, a massive difference and a real, a real delivery for climate change mitigation in the future.